What's up, y'all? This is Tasha. I am back with the final installment of Married at First Sight Season 15 Reunion Part 2. Y'all, they could have left all of this on the cutting room floor. We did not need any of this episode. I do not have a lot of notes, um, partly because I was bored, partly because I kept falling asleep because I was bored. Like, <laughs> Married at first sight, y'all should be embarrassed at y'all self for actually bringing this to us and wasting our time and watching it. So let's review it. Let's talk about it and let's get it over with. Okay, so we pick up with Justin and Alexis where he's had enough of her gaslighting, you know, saying that she came on to him one night after she left the club. I totally believe it, child. Alexis, you in this wig is lying, honey. Justin said he doesn't think Alexis was here for love. She laughs and says she tried everything in her. She grew past the initial unattraction she had. She pulled out everything out of her toolbox and she just overcame absolutely everything. And I was like, girl, if this is overcoming everything i hate to see you you know not give your all because if this is your all honey hate to see it of course um kevin takes her side blames justin for not giving her enough physical attention and basically they say there's no chance at friendship they're just completely done we then get Alexis' sister and Justin's brother comes to join us. Kevin questions Justin's brother, who was against him getting married in the very beginning, if y'all remember. He said that Justin really wasn't ready for the challenges that marriage presents, but who is really ready, let's be honest. Um, and he just did not want his brother to get hurt because he wanted love so much. Alexis' sister says she had reservations from the beginning because Alexis is spicy in knowing how to handle her. Um... Her sister found that Justin was a little bit more hot-headed than what he presented. And Alexis says they are both just two very passionate people and their communication style just does not work for them together. We then talk about Doggate for hopefully the last time ever in life. His brother says he was not impressed to see Justin give away Maya because she is a part of the family and he would have grown to resent Alexis for the decision he made. A thousand percent correct. Justin said after the dog situation, the trust never went back. And Alexis thinks um, he resented her and also resent, resented Newton. Of course he did. She said she wasn't upset the dog situation happened because they're dogs. They can't control the dogs. She was upset that Justin didn't disclose the information about Maya having three other previous attacks. But now Maya is back at home with her dad and he says he feels a hole again. So kudos to Justin and Maya. So both the brother and the sister agree that they were just on two opposite ends of the spectrum and that's okay. Kevin asks if it's over and Justin is trying to say no. Kevin is trying to convince him to say yes. And I'm just like, shut up, Kevin. And how many times do we need to hear them say it's over? It's done. They don't want to like how many times do we need to hear it at this point, people? Um, but they said they had both both moved on separately. Alexis says that people are checking in on her saying, you know, dang girl, I almost lost you forever. Girl, ain't nobody checking on, on your gaslighting behind and waiting for their information to be sprayed all over San Diego like you did, Justin. Ain't nobody in those DMs or trying to make you there forever, Alexis. Stop it, girl. So next we have all the ladies with Kevin. They share that they have a little group chat where they talk almost daily. Alexis and Kristen said they do talk daily. A little bit of trauma bonding there. Morgan said that the girls were really keeping her in the loop the whole time. So it's like she was there even when she wasn't. I roll. Alexis said Morgan came to her and asked what she knew because she knew Ben and Justin were close. And Alexis said she didn't just volunteer the information. So she was just trying to clear her name in this moment. Um, she says it was hard to watch their marriage fall apart and she did blame herself. Morgan then comes around and says she's so grateful that Alexis came to her with the information. So I said, well, did Alexis come to you or did you go asking Alexis? Y'all line and I need y'all to get the lie together before we come on TV. Kristen says she had a few regrets, but um, none of them is that she didn't try hard. Lindy and Stasha say that they didn't um, like Mitch. Stasha called him a bitch every chance that she could get. And I'm just like, Kristen, you must have known you was not going to stay with this man because ain't no way somebody can call my man a B-I-T-C-H 
anytime she felt like it. And I just laugh it off and think it's okay, girl. It's just, it's not okay, Stasha. Morgan says that Mitch took um, Kristen to hell and back. He didn't bring anything to the marriage. Morgan, glass houses, glass houses. Mind your own business, honey, because what did you bring to your own marriage besides your nasty attitude, huh? What was it? We're still waiting. Okay, nothing. Thank you. They didn't do a James Allen ad plug-in for the rings. Um, then they hit on Lindy and Miguel's issues that they keep trying to cover up. Um, she doesn't want to watch it. And I'm like, no, go ahead and watch yourself act a whole ass for national TV like the rest of us did. She said she really did. She, she really wished she didn't insert her um, showing out with her friend because, you know, it basically just, you know, it, it just inserted something negative into their love story because they just truly have a love story. I said, you think you have a fairy tale and fairy tales aren't real. So I guess go forth and be great. I don't know at this point, y'all. I just don't know. Kevin asked if there were times during the retreat when Lindy wanted to give up. She said no. She never wanted to give up on her husband, husband but um, some time alone with him would have been good. We revisit when um, Nate ranked him and Stasha's relationship in the middle, about a four out of five, and busted Stasha's whole bubble as she didn't appreciate it. That um, they then show Nate and Stasha giving Luna a bath. Basically, Nate stepped in and took care of the dog, and Stasha was like, "Well, yeah, you can take care of it. I'll take the dog on walks and do the cute stuff. You can clean the folds and do the bath and do all that stuff. Thanks, Nate." Segment was so boring yet again. I fell asleep. I think I caught Alexis saying that she wished didn't Justin didn't cry as much sometimes. And Morgan had a lot to say, bunch of comments to be made. And I don't think we really care what Morgan has to say. So let's move on. So now it's the guys turn to talk to Kevin and they say that, you know, all the guys basically hang out together with the exception of Nate, which is weird because if Justin has unfollowed everybody basically except Ben what's happening here there's some juiciness that needs to be told there which that's what they should have explored of why everybody hanging out except for nate so that means the rest of y'all got smoke for nate too is that what we saying i don't know justin said he felt bad for ben because of the pillow talking being on speakerphone with him and alexis hearing kevin says that morgan and ben may have worked if they did the deed earlier and i said no just no um, then we see the five minutes where she acted like she liked him and wanted to have sex with him. Nate tells us that Stasha really didn't care about, um, the scene with him being with the stripper at the bachelor party and basically making her get on her knees while he sprayed whipped cream in her mouth. And I don't believe that, but okay for telling us that Stasha was okay with it and she's confident. We then see a package of all of Justin's tears that I don't think was needed. We sat through all 51 episodes and we saw it all. We know he cries a lot. Most of the guys commended Justin for showing his emotion, but Nate said it was weird. And um, Justin is like, well, maybe you should get in touch more with your um, emotional side because I think your wife would enjoy it. The shade. They then bring out Pastor Cal and Dr. Pepper. They think bring out Ben and Mitch. Mitch tells us more of the same that we heard from him all season, how he had diarrhea of their mouth. He says he always felt like an outcaster, which is why he is so outspoken, because he always felt like he had to defend himself. Mitch, you're over 40 years old at this point. Get over that part of your life, okay? Pastor Cal tells Ben to give himself a chance um, to really not be perfect because he's a real catch. He has the body of a goddess. And I'm like, Pastor Cal, are you hitting on Ben at the moment? What is happening? What is really happening? But he overall wants Ben to not beat himself up. Now it's time for Morgan and Kristen to be with the experts. Kristen said she learned to speak up for herself and not to really avoid conflict because that just makes things worse. Morgan said in therapy, she's learned to not be so reactive and think with a logical side of her brain. I'm just happy to hear the child is in therapy. Kristen shares that, you know, her and Mitch kissed in the car after decision day, which is even weirder than everything else we've heard happen with them after decision day. Like, what? Let's move on. Um, Kristen said that watching the wedding after, um, 
after she saw it on air really changed her perception of it because she really thought the wedding was great but then watching the wedding kind of seeing Mitch's comments confessionals they were really hurtful because we all know he didn't really have a lot of nice things to say about her at the wedding pastor Cal tells the ladies that you know they had a um they had a desire to make it work and it just didn't work out and I was like correction Morgan did not have a desire to make this marriage work, okay? Pastor Cal asked Morgan if she could have given more grace. She says no because Ben went to Justin day after 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 day. And I said, child, weren't y'all only together like five to seven business days? Wasn't that the length of the marriage? So how many days could he have gone to just Justin when y'all was only together a hot minute okay i'm confused here morgan says it was disappointing to end so early it was not early enough for the rest of us and once again we see an interaction with the experts with morgan and none of them call her out in her nasty attitude that she gave ben the entire five minutes of fame she got on this show like we're still over here waiting waiting okay so next the experts meet with alexis and justin I've got nothing new because they didn't talk about anything new. These experts gave the advice that they probably should have given throughout the season and say that the two of them actually gave up. And I said, were we watching the same show? You think these two just gave up? How about y'all call out Alexis for belittling, belittling this man every chance that he got, every chance that she got? How about we talk about Justin kind of using his tears and emotion emotions as a little bit of manipulation with people in his life huh how about we address some of that which that's what we saw the entire season pastor cow and dr pepper i just next season ain't looking good y'all i ain't think i am done <laughs> with this show so next the entire cast is out again we have to see shirt gate again mitch said it was less about less about the shirt but being forced to do something he did not want to do miguel said he felt for a minute he was being set up as well but mitch did take it too far nate said he was completely clueless obviously and i can at least appreciate kevin for calling out mitch because he told mitch how can you really be upset for your wife you know wanting you to wear this shirt and look a certain way but yet you want your wife to look a certain way you want this boho chic beach babe who showers every three days probably but yet you got upset with her wanting you to wear this shirt make it make sense he said he looks at it differently but obviously the rest of it rest of us couldn't really catch on how he saw this differently because i wasn't grasping what he was trying to explain for us Mitch tells the group that it did hurt a little bit to be called a best, the B-I-T-C-H <laughs> um, from Stasha. Stasha gives a little fake apology because it's the, oh, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings type of bull that's not an apology. Alexis repeated that, you know, she just needed two hours to herself during, you know, within the week when she just wanted to go out with her friends. And Justin was like, he just still didn't want it to be happening every single weekend. Miguel, Lindy, Stasha, and Nate said, Don't, you know, we would be cool with it if our spouse, you know, wanted to get out and have their space. Nate's face said otherwise as if Stasha would not be down for the bull, but she'll let us, she'll say on TV that, oh, I'll be fine with it. But behind closed doors, she would pitch a probably complete fit. Justin tells us that he felt, you know, she was trying to avoid him by going out with her friends and that if he would if he would have been more understanding things maybe would have worked out differently they didn't talk to ben and morgan miguel and lindy and it's everything we have all heard before guys they do talk some more i fall asleep yet again because this episode is so damn boring i pick up that justin and nate just about got into it yet again and Alexis had to give him some affirmations, I guess. And Stasha had to tell Nate to shut up and stop acting like a child. I don't know because I didn't see it. And it was not worth my time to go back and rewind it, y'all. So this is officially a wrap for season 15. I will not be reviewing 
where are they now next week because if it's anything like the where are they now that they've had before it was so closely filmed past the reunion that there is really no point i'm sure the spoilers and the real tea will come out soon enough some of it has already spilled so i'm sure that's where we will really find out what's going on with these couples so i will not be reviewing next week not only because i don't want to but i'm also going to the kurt franklin maverick city concert and i'm so excited about that and that is much more important than wasting two hours of my time sharing and reviewing information that we have heard for the past 14 15 16 weeks with this show okay y'all so that is a wrap for me on season 15 and more than likely a wrap for me reviewing this show. If y'all have other shows that you are interested in and you would like my opinion on it, drop those down in the comments below too. I think I'm gonna pick up Love and Marriage DC when it comes back, cause I really did enjoy that. And you know, whenever Put a Ring on it comes back, I think I'll do that. Um, but if there's anything else y'all are interested in me watching and reviewing, drop those down in the comments because Married at first sight, over and out, okay? So until then, I will catch y'all in the next video. Peace.